With the exponential increase in the number of vehicles from 800 million today to over 2.5 billion by year 2030, most of which will be introduced in developing countries, the rapid increase in population to 8.2 billion people, which is equivalent to adding a new China and India in today's world, plus the immigration of people to urban locations, two out of three people are going to live in an urban environment by 2040, and with the new cities being developed, the central question is, how could the game changes technologies play out in urban mobility by year 2030? We will use the scenario planning approach to address this question because the possible solutions are capital intensive, irreversible in investment and have low clock speeds. We will look at two plausible but very divergent scenarios and at the same time that are internally consistent. One will be the protectionist world, defined as the Flintstones, and the other will be the transformative world, defined as the Jetsons. Our Flintstone scenario is characterized by a growing protectionism focusing on achieving short-term goals and topics such as defense and security, employment protection, restrictive knowledge sharing, policies focused on national climate, and policy implementation not necessarily in favor of global development as they're driven by self-interest. Additionally, the world continues to face high economic volatility and the overall economic growth will be stalled by increased capital restrictions. Due to the restricted knowledge sharing policies, there will be limited technological transfer which will limit global innovation. Therefore, renewable energy technology will receive little attention. In order to cover for the increasing energy demand, countries like the US, China, India and several Latin American countries will continue to rely heavily or increase their usage of coal-generated electricity. Not short after, due to the local health concerns, governments will be pushing climate policies targeted to reduce coal emissions, leading to the proliferation of clean coal power plants. Simultaneously, it is expected that the world's population will increase by 1% yearly till reaching 8.2 billion by 2030. This will translate into an increased demand for efficient transportation. In developing countries such as China and India, where their large infrastructure investment is required, we expect their government to invest in expanding current public transportation, specially powered by electricity, and explore new technologies such as the pot cars. In countries with high fiscal deficit and low expected economic growth, such as the US, OCDE countries, UK and Japan, will not be able to finance new public transportation solutions. Therefore, there might be an increase on private investment in on-demand car rental businesses in order to meet the rising necessities. Finally, in the case of new cities like Masdar, located in Abu Dhabi, the urbanistic design will discourage the use of traditional means of transportation. In these cases, we expect PRT technology to be the standard mean of transportation. Although these scenarios consider the inclusion of innovative transportation technology and more efficient ways to power large-scale public transportation, by 2030 the use of traditional vehicles will not be banished. However, given that by 2020 oil prices are expected to rise and reach almost $100 a barrel, customers will opt for better fuel-efficient vehicles and the new generation of hybrid cars will increase their market share. Additionally, it is expected that the national climate and health policies will penalize the use for ICE-only vehicles, contributing to the hybrid car penetration. Also, due to the rising oil prices, by 2025, the first generation of traveling wave nuclear technology could be seen in some developed countries being used to power cities and by 2030 to pass mass transportation such as trains. Finally, in this scenario, we expect to see technologies such as the machine vision to be developed, however limited to defense and security, since might strengthen the automation by various means, which will ultimately result in significant unemployment, initially in low-skilled labor and later on higher-skilled labor. Let's take a look at the world of George Jetson. In the world of George, global imbalances are addressed by learning from past mistakes. They believe that with collaboration and sharing technology, a higher sustainable growth could be achieved and we will then operate with Pareto optimality. Globalization resumes and there is a strong emphasis on efficiency and productivity. In this state, there is a free flow of capital, goods, labor and technology. Cross-border public and private partnerships stimulate funding for fundamental research and development. 
At the same time, an interactive Copenhagen II climate change policy is enacted and provides the foundation for a sustainable global trade and economic development. With this, people are more conscious and concerned about this topic. This increases investment into the development of alternative energy. In general, it has been observed that energy uses has a direct positive relation with GDP in the case of developing nations. As a response, G20 forms a coalition with the objective of funding new alternate technologies with an overall goal to develop efficient, less pollutant, and the sustaining energy solutions that are safe, scalable, and sustainable, three of the four S's. The BRIC countries continue rapid growth with investments in infrastructure development that adhere to good stewardship. These countries are now very conscious of their actions as they have an impact on the rest of the world. As part of the alternate energy solution, investments are now directed into three main categories. Nuclear, better battery power development and investment in energy from biofuels. With this context, new cities are being formed and the existing cities are becoming denser. This creates a problem of overpopulation and hindrance in the urban mobility where the existing infrastructure does not hold. In the other hand, new cities in developing countries are emerging and the urban planning will start from scratch. In this case, we would like to ask if urban is equal urban. Clearly not. There are three types of urban environments that we will focus on. Depending on the type of city, the urban mobility will be different. First, ICE, internal combustion engine cities which are built for long distance traveling via personal cars. Two, sophisticated mass transit cities, something like Singapore, where personal vehicles are discouraged with the deep public transportation available. Three, new cities that are planned, mostly in developed countries. In case of new cities where the planning and development takes about five years, we can envision an implementation of personal rapid transit or PRT systems. This can start out with a small incremental expenditure when added to the cost of the city infrastructure. In the case of ICE cities, high investment will be a constraint. To address health environmental and traffic congestion issues, the auto industry and car on demand owners will continue to shape regulation to give traffic preferences to hybrid cars as part of their non-market strategy. With cooperation in technology and innovation coming out of research, we can expect the portable nuclear traveling wave technology to be commercially available for deployment and testing in at most three years. This will result in introducing the traveling wave technology in urban train transportation. Since countries are working together, this technology will be quickly dissipated across nations and deployed it worldwide. That will result in more energy available for transportation purposes. Research into battery power and storage solutions will get better and get more usage into hybrid cars and these vehicles will be the norm in the next 20 years. Their price and availability of food will be more important than in first generation renewable energies. Because of this, research will be focused on next stages of biofuels which generate energy from non-food products. Research in machine vision, which is currently in testing, will be more important factor in the 8 to 10 years. This will impact the PRT system which will no longer require specialized guide ways or expensive infrastructure. With this technology merged with the PRT, it can be widely available in many cities, even developed countries, where the change will not be expensive and can reuse all the existing infrastructure, roadways among others. We do not see the following technologies deployed in the next 20 years in our Jetson scenario, energy storage technology and full electric vehicles. The way governments and society address the challenges we are currently facing will determine the outcome for future urban mobility. Political issues will shape the future of the game-changing technologies and at the same time urban transportation. Capital flows and countries' interactions are the key factor of how urban technologies will play out in the future, especially in the time to market evolution. Hybrid cars will be used in both scenarios but the market penetration will depend upon the technologies such as battery power development. Nuclear wave transportation technology will come in the picture of urban transportation. Nevertheless, the efficiency and the time to market will be different between scenarios. Urban density will not be the same. In the transformative scenario, urban mobility will be a more critical issue. Efficiency, main drivers, 